Hello people, this is Johnny again, this time with a tutorial on how to build your signal chains for your guitar tones mainly. Although I'm showing this on the PodHD Pro, I'll try to make it as general as possible so you can also apply it to amp simulation plugins or real gear if you have that. And yeah, well the best way I figured out how to explain signal chains is just by dialing in the tone and explaining in depth why I use certain effects on certain positions and how it benefits your tone or not. Let's go right ahead. First thing you need to choose as always is your amp. I'm just going to go with a general gentle rhythm tone so I'll just pick the angel F ball right now. Yeah the F U ball. Um, yeah just some basic stuff. It's really not what this tutorial is now about. Uh, okay, now let's get actually to the interesting stuff. The first thing in your signal chain should be a noise gate. Because at every gain stage in your signal chain, you want to have a noise gate that cuts out extra noise that is introduced by that gain stage. The first stage being your guitar actually introduces noise through the pickups and the cable and whatnot and that's what you want to cut out and this is also what you hear right now in the background this hiss that comes from that now let's cut it out dynamics noise gate yeah just gonna turn on the decay to have it tight that's how you can start off now with this noise gate of the pod hd I would not dare to put the threshold higher than 50, at least not in front of the amp, because then it really compromises your tone, as you can hear. So just that it cuts out the noise, it's plenty enough. Now we could go with a compressor or a distortion pedal. Best would be actually both. We have the chance, so why not? Uh, let's go first with the compressor. Dynamics. I'll just pick the rat comp. I like this one from the Pod HD. Now, the idea with the compressor is to get more sustain, of course. You can put a compressor in front of the amp or behind the amp. The choice is really up to you. They, it does make a different effect. You still get more sustain, but if you put it in front of the amp, then the whole signal is compressed first and the amp is driven with a more consistent signal. Therefore, when the note actually fades off, the distortion still retains its character. I'll just show you what I mean. So first of all, you should figure out a setting at which the compressor does not do anything. With the red comp, it's at zero and 75. And here it's not doing anything so now let's introduce some sustain and see what it does you see the compressor drives the amplifier with a more consistent signal and there you can also hear very good how the compressor introduces noise again without it you're pretty much cut off. With it, you have a lot of afterburning. But for now, we can put still a distortion pedal. So let's just do that. Dyna no, not dynamics, distortion. Let's just pick the screamer. Now the idea for the distortion pedal is to drive the amplifier with a more characteristic sound, so to say, the characteristics of this distortion pedal. Of course, it depends again on what you want to do and how you set the distortion pedal. If you really set it in a way that it introduces more distortion, well, fine. But for gentle tone, you know, I like to just use the characteristic sound of the screamer. So I pull down the drive, I keep the output not too high so it doesn't boost the amp too much and introduces too much distortion into the tone. Yeah. And here you see. It just gives the whole tone more character. Now I had the question 
once if it makes a difference if the distortion pedal is in front of the amp or behind the amp. Well, yeah, just try it out. The reason why that is, is because the cabinet actually cuts out a lot of high end, but distortion always introduces more high end and all this fizziness and stuff. That's why if I just pull out the cap, see, there's a lot of fizziness going on from all the distortion. So putting a distortion pedal behind the amp doesn't really make sense. You always wanted to put in front of the amp to really boost the amp with a characteristic tone and yeah, to give you what you want. So let's just set those settings however we want it. Yeah, I like it like this. And you hear there's a lot of afterburning, so we need another gate because here we have the gain stage again. The tone is boosted. So let's go with another dynamic. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay, now you could also switch the distortion and the compressor. Doesn't make that much of a difference now. It's kind of up to you. Of course, if the compressor is in front of the distortion pedal, then also the distortion pedal uh, gets a more even out signal and is driven with a more consistent signal. Therefore, the distortion and the character this pedal introduces is more consistent. But those are just subtle changes if you switch those two, really. Okay, now you could go with a pre-EQ. So an equalizer before the amplifier. It has its pros and it has its cons, though the cons are very subjective, I think. The pros are you can control the distortion character of your tone a bit more detailed. Now, since I already have the screamer in here, which has a kind of an EQ in it, I can show you what I mean. For example, if you boost the bass, you get a much more muffled sound. But if you pull out all of the low end, then the amp is left with just the mid range and the high end, and therefore you also get more focus on that. But of course, if you pull out too much, you kind of lose the power of the tone. So you really can fiddle around with the pre-EQing however you want it. But now we have a general tone. Now you could go ahead with post-EQing. Post-EQing, so EQ behind the amplifier, can really help to further shape your tone. For example, I like to cut two annoying frequencies and boost three good frequencies. Therefore, I love having a parametric equalizer with five bands. But no, the Podigy Pro provides us with a parametric equalizer with only one band. And this one band does not even show me hertz or dBs, which are the general units for this kind of stuff. No, it shows me percent. <sighs> well, I'm not going to go into detail now with what frequencies I want to cut and to boost because I went through this stuff already in my other tutorials. So yeah, this is up to you, just for the sake of showing you what I'm doing. <laughs> cutting some scratchiness and then see I have to use two parametric equalizers damn it what in there then cutting some honkiness okay it's clipping so we need to Lower the volume. Okay, now to boost something again. Of course you at home can do whatever the hell you want with the post EQing. 
So it doesn't really matter what I'm showing you here right now. So please also don't ask me questions about what I'm showing you right now with the post EQing. The important thing to take out of this right now is with post EQing, you can shape your tone, you can cut out annoying frequencies, you can boost good frequencies. So try this out yourself. Uh, no, I wanted this one. Let's boost the high mids and the highs. Yeah, you see some nice mids coming out. Maybe shift it a bit higher. Perhaps a little bit of low mids. And now, since we are behind another gain stage with the amplifier, we can go with another gate. Okay. Okay. And you put the threshold a bit higher behind the amp, it's okay. Because you have a lot of loudness. And there, that's how you can build a signal chain. Now, once I got a question if it makes a difference to put an impulse response before the amplifier or behind the amplifier. Hmm. Well, just think about that question because it's not even possible in real life. The signal of the guitar has very small electrical currents that need to be amplified by the amplifier. So the signal is loud enough to drive a speaker. I mean, have you ever tried to even put just your headphones into your guitar directly? You won't hear anything. So putting a cabinet in front of the amp doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can try it out at home when you have amp plugins and impulse responses, but you'll notice it sounds messed up. Yeah. So much for that.